I feel like we're more apt to talk to one another more openly about issues we're having on productions or reach out to each other for help in a way that I sort of didn't see prior to us unionizing. Last year, Dan Pinto and his co-workers at Titmouse in New York, the animation studio responsible for Harry the Spy and Super Jail, formed a union with the Animation Guild. I spoke to Dan to find out what it was like to go through the unionizing process. I'm Dan Pinto. Um, I'm a storyboard artist at Titmouse New York currently, uh, and I've been working in the New York uh, animation scene for close to a decade at this point. Um, yeah, and the last six or seven years of that have been um, at Titmouse New York. What uh, led you and your colleagues to form a union in your workplace? Right. So. Um, the New York animation scene, since I've been in it, um, has been non-union. And so we always had in the back of our mind this idea that there was a union in LA and that New York was just not going to be a part of that for a long time. And everyone who's worked in, in animation in New York has already had always felt, I don't know, a lot of the struggles of dealing with a non-union workforce, of being a non-union workforse. And... Um, it, Titmouse in particular had had some really rough times, especially early on in the studio in New York. And so it sort of was a, was a gradual build of people realizing that we could have a better working environment and have more say in sort of how the studio was run. And um, yeah, it just sort of came to a head about two years ago and we started organizing, we started talking to our work colleagues and we, you know, got it done. Why did you decide to organize with um, the Animation Guild um, slash the uh, IATSC as a, the national union. Right. So there, so there were basically two options um, when it came to organizing. Either we went our independent route, or meaning we started a brand new local, or we went with the TAG, Animation Guild Local 839. Um, and for us, it ended up kind of being a no-brainer to go with the Animation Guild because it, it represented so much of the animation work that already is being done in, in the US. And um, they had a, a mandate to try to expand out of LA. And we happened to kind of collide with them in, a, in, a, in, a, in the right time. And yeah, they, they, the, the, the amount of resources they had, the amount of resources they had to help us during negotiations, during organizing was just, um, you know, it was, uh, uh, there, there was no price tag on it. It was just like, you know, it was invaluable. So, yeah, so it, was, it was kind of a no-brainer for us to go with them. And how, how did you uh, personally become involved in the organizing effort? Like, what, what, uh, what led you to get involved in the, the campaign? Right. So the, the organizing committee had already existed prior to my joining it. Um, and they reached out to me as someone who'd been at Titmouse for a while um, because they knew that, I guess, I had... I'd been there for a minute, right? So I, because I've been there for a while, they kind of figured I had more connections than I, I maybe I actually did. But they they reached out to me as someone you know who they wanted in and 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 explained what the process was like, and I sort of I jumped on board happily to kind of get this ball moving and and do whatever I could to help organize our workplace. And um, can you just uh, touch on like what was the, the process for uh, for for your union at, at Titmouse, New York? Um, the process is pretty, um, I assume it's similar to every place. It starts with just talking to your coworkers, right? Um, we just talk to everyone who worked there, try to get a handle on how they felt about it, <clears throat> what their issues were in terms of the the workplace and, and, and production pipelines and all that kind of stuff, and really listen to what people's concerns were and ask them, how they felt about organizing together and, 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 and forming a union. And we did that for about, I don't know, nine months or so, reaching out, talking to everyone, having weekly meetings to, to catch everyone up, all the organizing committee people up on, on who we were talking to and what people felt. And um, at a certain point, it came to a head about the end of 2021, I think, uh, early 2022, where we just had a massive uh, card vote um, for for organize for for whether they wanted to join the union or not, and we had about a ninety we had ninety plus percent people um, sign cards 
to authorize a, a, a union. And you mentioned like, uh, you know, talking about issues in your workplace. What what were some of the issues that inspired uh, the, your organizing drive specifically? With with animation in general in New York City, there's there's always this understanding that you're not paid as well as LA. New York animators make, like, I don't know, 60% what an LA ma animator would make on the same shows. So we always, that was always going to be in the back of our minds. And that was at the back of, like, everyone's, uh, uh, concerns with with the the new york ecosystem was that you know it's kind of untenable to have these low rates and that that was a big concern for a lot of the un, unit members um other concerns were the general idea of like separating work and life so so having overtime pay which was never really an option before um uh, making sure that that um uh, productions ran smoothly and that people weren't overworked or 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 um, um, over tasks with things. Um, another thing was uh, a scope creep in terms of like, um, a, I, I work as a storyboard artist and sometimes storyboard artists are also timing out their shots or, or um, essentially doing um, what are called uh, uh, in-betweens, which is like key poses that we shouldn't, we shouldn't be drawing as much of those things. And that sort of happens amongst all, uh, all the all the different classifications. So those are some of the big ones, you know, pay is a big one, scope creep is a big one, and really working on a, on a way to kind of get back to a sustainable way of, of work-life balance. And um, at this point, since your your union's kind of, you know, you don't have a, you're not, uh, your contract's not in place yet, but you're, um, you know, you've had a, a union for a while. How has your workplace already changed since forming your union? Um, I've noticed um, a, a, a greater sense of community among my work, my work colleagues and myself. Um, I feel like we're more apt to talk to one another more openly about issues we're having on productions or reach out to each other for help in a way that I sort of didn't see prior to us unionizing. Um, and that goes even further to, to other things. I, I had a, a, a co-worker reach out to me about health insurance, which I, I mean, I'm not an expert in health insurance, but they were more than willing to ask me about it. And I forwarded them to another co-worker who had more experience and who was more than happy to help them with it. So that sort of idea of like, oh, we can, we can help each other out a lot more than we think. Um, realizing that we were all kind of suffering in silence in a lot of ways really helped um, uh, um, build that community sense, which, which was was there but it wasn't as strong as it is now i think that's great um and like specifically for for you as someone who um you know had never been in a union before what was what was it like going through the actual process of of organizing your union um it's it's um very time consuming and very very like labor intensive um we had um an organizing committee of i think it fluctuated between 12 and 15 people throughout the course of the the, the organizing effort um and we had about 100 i think at our peak we had 115 employees to reach out to so um that ends up being a lot of time for these individuals to to work and and add that along with with weekly meetings to to catch ourselves up on what i was went up to getting updates from tag and all that kind of stuff um yeah, it took a long time. It took about nine months to do, and um, yeah, it was a lot of work. But it was um, it was great to 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 actually talk to people, it, it, realizing that kind of um, the power and just listening to someone else talk about what the issues are and really hearing and commiserating with them on what the what the problems are and, and trying to find solutions. And. Um... You know, since it is a long process, uh, how did your you and your coworkers stay united and motivated? Uh, you know, throughout the whole process. Um, yeah, so we tried to hold monthly town halls um, with our with our unit members to 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 discuss um, what's been happening, especially since negotiations started, to talk with them about what's been happening and 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 what they can expect. Um, recently, we've been having more discussions about ratification as we're getting closer to the end of our contract, the end of the, the uh, negotiations. So trying to keep people informed, reaching out personally, doing more one-on-ones with folks to talk with them individually about what to expect and, and check in with them and see how they're doing. So we try to keep an open line of communication between our unit members and the organizing committee. 
and yeah that was sort of the the, the biggest point the, the the other thing we did is um we had uh like a big picnic in the summertime to invite people in um during during tip mouse events during like in-person tip mouse events we asked folks to wear pins in solidarity which i have one somewhere here but i can't find it but things oh, like I, that I see, I see the logo on your, you uh, that, your yeah, you see our, our cool logo here <laughs> yeah um we asked folks to add stuff like that to their um, tip mouse has a has a yearly tradition of doing what's called a um, five second day where people make short films and uh, we asked people to add their their a little strong bird into their uh, short films so yeah things like that to, to sort of um keep people together and, and to show solidarity that's that's really cool um and what do you think is the like your biggest takeaway from organizing your union um the biggest takeaway would be that um i was i was shocked to see not shocked. I was surprised to see how how similar all of our issues were, generally speaking, with with the workplace, and how many of us have, as I said before, we're suffering in silence. How many of us just sort of figured this is just the way it is, and it's not going to change? And so, when the organizing committee reached out to me, I was I was in that sort of same boat of like this it, it, this can't happen, and then realizing that like with enough effort it could happen. Um, I think I saw that same sort of light turn on as I talk to other people one-on-one -on -one, as I talk to other unit members they re realize I'm like oh that we we can do this this is possible um and realizing that they didn't have to you know again, again suffer in silence like they had been doing that they could just through through work through communication through talking with each other openly and honestly we could find a solution to this thing and by standing together there was there was more power to to, to we had more power than we thought we did and what so so what advice would you give other professionals considering unionizing or you know just at the early stages of the union organizing process like what what have you learned that you would pass on to them if you're organizing if you're the if you're, if you're one of the actual organizers and trying to push for organization um i think organizing starts with just having frank open discussions with your coworkers and listening to people and meeting people where they're at and having empathy. And I think if you start there, you build more trust and solidarity uh, with others, being willing to talk with other people and, and ask questions and answer questions, honestly, and realizing that all that helps to, 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 to build a sense of, of solidarity amongst uh, workers, realizing that, you know, a lot of the issues you're, you're going to face in the workforce are going to be individual issues they're going to be issues that everyone feels and yeah i think that's the best bet i think if you if, if you move forward with like honesty and empathy you're going to find a lot more uh willingness to 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 not only listen but to join in well thank you so much for uh taking the time dan oh no problem thanks for having me